Hi everyone, welcome to the Wall Art Wall channel. I'm Xenia. In this awesome video, I'm gonna show you the really cool way to apply decorative paint with stand effect that totally transform your walls and give them unique look. So, first thing first, we've got to start with the right primer. I'm using a latex primer because it's white and practically odorless. Applying it is best done with microfiber roller with medium nap and a brush. Beforehand, I dampen the roller in water and give it a good squeeze. I always do this and I really like the result. Alright, here we go. Starting from the corner, I use a brush to cover all the edges and corners, like this. Then I grab the roller to cover the rest of the surface. Since my area isn't too big, I'm using a narrow roller. But if you're working on a larger wall, it's better to go for a wider one, around 9 inches or 25 centimeters. Anything wider might become a bit unwieldy. Once I've applied the primer, I just leave it to dry completely. Now the wall is ready for the next step. We'll need some painter's tape, a laser level and some spackle. I set up the level and start sticking the first tape from ceiling to floor. When I applied the first piece, I leave a small random gap and then stick the second tape, making sure it's level with the first one. Don't place the tapes too far apart from each other. We want the end result to look great. In the corner, I leave a tiny 1 mm gap with the adjacent wall and uh, on the other side, I create a larger 3 cm gap. I put the painter's tape all over the area that I want to decorate and it's time to apply a speckle to the wall. I start from top and work my way down in a straight section. The thickness of the speckle layer should be around 2-3 mm, not need to go thicker than that. The speckles should be applied carefully, not necessarily perfect even, but the key is to fill the entire unsealed surface of the wall with a speckling compound. While the speckling is still dry, I remove the tape from the previously speckled areas. It's not difficult at all. It's very easy. Next, I apply speckling to the next section from top to bottom, from ceiling to floor. For this task, it's better to choose a speckling compound with a very smooth finish that it's also strong and reliable. This will help maintain the decorative effect on the walls for an extended period and bring your satisfaction with their appearance. I have already applied speckling to the final section and I'm removing the remaining tape. While the speckling compound is drying, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on interesting videos. My speckling compound has dried and it's ready for the sanding. You can sand it manually or using sanding machine. I use it with a 120 abrasive. Now the surface is more smooth and even, so you can apply a colored base for decorative sand. I have a white acrylic paint, so I tinted it in a dark grey-green color for the first coat. And for the second coat, I make it a light grey. I mix both paints and start with a dark color. First. I paint the inner corner and the joints between the ceiling and floor. Okay, so then I move on to the main part of the wall, applying the paint with the roller. I move up and down, stretching the paint along the directions of the strips. It's very important to fill in the recents with the dark color. After the first coat has dried, I move on to the second coat, but this time using the light paint. For this, I'll need a cellulose sponge. I apply a thin layer of paint to the sponge and immediately start painting the tops of the strip texture. 
Move the sponge up and down without applying too much pressure. All movements should be light to avoid fitting in the recess of the strips. By using the dark color on the bottom and the light color in the top, you can achieve more depth and dimension in the pattern. Once the second coat of paint has dried, I proceed to apply decorative sand. I use a color-based sand, which is light silvery pink tint. I'll apply the sand with a white soft brush, I saturate the brush well with the material and begin painting the wall from the corner. The movements should be straight from bottom to top and vice versa. If the sand accumulates in large patches, turn the brush and break up those areas, like this. Keep in mind that this material can leave uh, marks in the joints, so apply the paint following the texture of the strips. This way the joint will be seamless and the wall will have a beautiful appearance in the end. Once I finished this first wall, I move on to the adjacent wall and continue applying the sand from the inner corner. There is nothing difficult in process, just make sure to follow my recommendations. I've completed the application and in a couple of hours the sand will be completely dry and it will have its final appearance. The seamless blending of colors from the dark grey-green base to the light top of coat creates a beautiful gradient effect that brings the wall to life. And if you have any questions, please write them in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.